What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're going to be talking about Bubble Sort. And Bubble Sort is simultaneously the easiest algorithm, one of the easiest algorithms you'll ever learn. And it's also one of the most inefficient algorithms. With sorting algorithms, they are typically inefficient and you never want, you will never see a Bubble Sort out in the wild because a Bubble Sort is quadratic. It is the jalopy. It's the moped of algorithms. You do not want to make any type of algorithm that has this type of structure. And I'll show you this, the exact stru structure to look out for and I'll show you why they actually, there's many reasons that they teach you bubble sort and you need to learn bubble sort because number one, if they ask you this on an interview and you don't know bubble sort, bye. Just if you can't answer bubble sort, they're just going to say this, you know, they might even do something like that. They'll probably be nice to you and let you allow you to finish. But if you don't know bubble sort, I'm sorry, but that's, it's not going to be the job for you. So learn, le definitely learn bubble sort and learn it because you're going to learn swaps. And these are, these are absolutely crucial to learning how to solve algorithms. You're going to learn how to do swaps and you're going to learn how nested for loops work. And, um, that's pretty much it but it's a sorting algorithm so we're trying to get all we're trying to get it in ascending order we're trying to go from largest so one two and i'm just kind of you know four five and i think i did this actually correctly so we're trying to get this we're trying to turn this into this and the way that we do that is very simple we're just going to go through each one of these by one by or by this little box we're going to go by two at a time and we're going to switch them if this number on the left side is larger than this side because remember we want the larger numbers towards this side so we are not going to swap on this one so this number is smaller than this number the the smaller number is already right here so we're going to move on to the next one and it's going to be the exact same thing we're not going to move over two we're just going to move over one and we're going to put this metaphorical red box around these numbers and we're going to do the exact same thing. So is this number larger than this one? Yes, so we want to swap. We want to put this number over here and we're going to take the six, we're gonna put it where the one is and it's going to be just like this. And we're going to, I'm going to do just a couple of these just to give you you know the idea of how it works so six and seven is six greater than seven no so we are not going to swap on this one and you literally just go through each and every one of these painstakingly and that's why it's such a terrible algorithm because you're going to have to do if you literally did this hundreds of, if you just sat here for probably like the next hour and did this exact same thing eventually believe it or not you will get the point you will get to the point where it will be sorted and seven is greater or seven is greater than two so we're going to swap remember we want the bigger numbers on this side so we're going to put seven over here we're going to put two over on the other one we're just going to swap them and it's going to be the exact same thing and then this is going to be the very last iteration and i'm going to teach you how to make this box and i'm going to teach you how to do the swap and i'm going to teach you how to do this so that it will keep going through because if you just the reason why we have a nested for, we're gonna be using a nested for loop on this is because if you just have one for loop it's just gonna run just that one time but you need it to run over and over and over again so seven four we're gonna do the swap because seven is greater than four and seven needs to be on this side and believe it or not our larger number just got to the end so on the now when we iterate back through it this will already be swapped and we will already um, have that bigger number and it will be sorted to a certain extent already but you can see how inefficient that is i mean if you now we're gonna have to go through one more time let's just do one more just for old time's sake and just to show you guys you know then you're gonna go through and you're gonna do the exact same thing and you could imagine I mean, just doing this by hand is incredibly inefficient. So we've got the five and the five is greater than the one. So we're going to go ahead and switch them. But as time goes on, they do get a little bit more sorted and it's a little bit easier. But as you can get the picture, this is a terrible algorithm. Good algorithm to learn, but not a good algorithm to actually implement in any type of real situation. So 
that's enough that's pretty much it and we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into visual studio we're going to begin by implementing an array so we're just going to go in here we're going to make an array and we're just going to call this int array we're going to initialize this with int and we will just go in here and we're going to literally make the exact same array that we made in on the whiteboard. So we go here, we're gonna go seven, we're gonna go two, we're gonna go four, just like that. And for some reason, oh, I don't have the new, so I need to cr uh, add this new here, otherwise this is not going to work. Okay, great, so it does work. Then we're gonna go down here, we're gonna have a nice little console write line and we're going to put binary search. We haven't created the function, uh, at all or already but we don't need to worry about that because we're just going to create it right down here so we're going to go bubble sort not bubble we're sorting so bubble sort but why, why do they call it binary sort? okay bubble sort intelligence is going <laughs> intelligence is going wild today <clears throat> all right so bubble sort and what we want to do is we're going to go ahead we're going to put in our array right here and let's go ahead and build out this function so the only um, state I call this state the variables at the very top are almost like um, properties in a class it's state that the rest of the for loop is going to use and whenever you're creating an algorithm it's always best to think about the states you know are you going to have to create a new array are you going to make this thing in place are you going to have a start and an end and you need to think about the pointers that you have so this is going to hold uh the temporary variable for the swap and we don't have that quite yet but just always um, remember that with bubble sort you're going to have to be doing a swap and this is almost state think of this as state so it's temporary swap variable and I will explain to this explain to you what this means here in a second and I'm just going to put think state so the temporary variable and we can literally initialize this with anything because this is going to be changing so much it doesn't even really matter what we put in here but the next thing that we're going to have to worry about is um, creating the very first for loop and I'm just going to build out I'm going to make these two for loops and I'm going to explain to the, explain to you what they mean after I get done building them because if I try to explain it as I go like this it's going to be really confusing so we're going to have array length and then we're going to have pointer plus plus and then we're going to go down here and then we're going to have a second for loop remember that this is a very inefficient algorithm so um, this is why we're doing this. And this, the reason that they actually make you learn this is because these algorithms, this is almost like what you should not do in order, in order to create an algorithm. If you are creating an algorithm and it has bubbles, it looks like a bubble sort, whew, you're gonna have a bad time and you're not, you probably won't get the job, but that's why we're here, we're here to learn. So we're gonna go here. All right, so before I type this, you need to realize that this is a pointer and this second for loop is going to be what is going to actually be doing the sorting so the second the first for loop is just going to imagine this this is the for, first one right here so this is going to be the i for loop this but actually called the pointer and then this one's going to be down here this one's going to be the j so just so i don't have to type all that out this is going to be the pointer this is going to be the sort Actually, I'm just gonna put, I'm just gonna get, I got, I even have a whack of tablet here. So let's just, I'm gonna go ahead and not be lazy and go ahead and put, type this down. So pointer is going to be here pretty much all the time. And then the sort is going to be what is going to actually be doing the sorting. So this is the sort for loop. This is the one that's labeled as sort. And this is what's going to be making this box that's going to be this pointer box it's not really a box but it's kind of like a box that goes around and is comparing these and the pointer is going to be what redoes the for loop so with this box we're just with this sort algorithm we're literally this bottom one the sort one the inside the nested for loop this is the second one and then it's going to keep doing this this for loop here 
the sort for loop is going to be what's making that box. The pointer is going to be what's going to reinitialize. So this box is gonna get all the way to the end and then the pointer is gonna go back and it's gonna restart. And that pointer is what's going to be char in charge of it restarting and just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Otherwise, if you just have one for loop, it will only run one time. It'll still, it'll still iterate on it, but it's not gonna do all of the, like literally hundreds of iterations that are going to be needed. And that's one of the reasons why we don't do nested for loops is because it's literally so many iterations, it's, it's, it's nuts. So we're gonna go in here, then we're gonna have sort, and it's going to be plus one. And then let me see here, we're gonna go here. So this if statement is going to be what is actually doing the comparing. So this is going to be, uh, iterates over entire loop many times forms the box that does the comparison. And then this is going to be, this checks to see if left side is larger than the right. Cause that was the whole, that was like the whole entire idea with this algorithm is that we're gonna form a box around this and we're gonna check is the left bigger than the right. If not, we're not going to sort it. If it is, here's, let me try and find an example. So this is an example of a side that is bigger than the left. That's when we're actually going to do the swap. And I'll show you, ex a swap is almost like a design pattern. And we're gonna take our temp that we just declared. And it's kind of, it's kind of odd looking, but I promise you, you'll, you'll get it like as soon as I explain it to you. So we go here. And then we're going to add, so we're gonna store this as a temporary variable. And this is this whole entire design pattern is going to be called a swap. And we store, you may be wondering like, why do we even use a temp? Just remember, we store variable as temp so we don't overwrite it when we swap because if we don't have this temporary variable, when we do the actual swap, we won't be able to, we'll only be able to swap one value and, or we'll only be able to put one value over and we won't be able to put the other value, value over because we overwrote it. So here, this is going to be, I'll show you. So array is equal to sort plus one. And this is going to be array and we're gonna have the sort variable. And this is what puts, okay, so put left variable in the right. So this puts the left variable in the right. And then we go down here and then we put the right variable in the left. And that's why we store, we go array, then we have the sort, and it's going to equal the temp. And that's, that's that right there is a swap, it's almost like a design pattern. Whenever you see this, you can just look at this and be like, oh, there's a, there's a swap going on. And whenever you see, this is almost like a design pattern too. This is almost like, oh, we're comparing two places next to each other in an array. And that's how that's how you can spot that. So here, then after that, after we get done, we're going to return the whole entire array. And just making sure I've got all my dies, eyes dotted and my T's crossed because <laughs> I don't want to run this thing and it like mess up on the stream because that's no fun. And we're gonna go in here and let's just go ahead and start running it. And we're gonna clear out all these watches and we're gonna make our own. So add a watch here, whatever type of IDE that you're using. We're gonna add a watch here, add a watch to your pointer. 
the main thing that we're going to be looking at is the array though so let me see what else do we need let's also do our add a watch to our sort and you will see how this is going to work so here it's going to iterate through it's going to do our first round it's going to go and basically do very quickly what we were first doing at when we first started uh swapping in showing you how this pseudocode works on the whiteboard it's going to do one iteration through the whole entire array so it's going to go down and the first one if you see here the first one was and it the first one was larger than the second one five, or six was right here five was right here six was right here five was right here and as you can see here it went ahead and swapped them so now we're going to go through and it's going to move on to the next array it's not going to be going into this. It's not going to be going into that first for loop because it wants to move on to the next one. So we're going to go to the next one. Then it's going to check again. So is six greater than one? Yes. So it's going to go ahead. It's going to switch them. Six is greater than one. And I think you guys kind of get the picture. So just watch, watch this array right here. Just, and you'll see, just ever so slowly, it's going to go through and it swapped them. Now it's gonna go back and our new pointer array is going to be set and we're going to iterate through again. So our pointer array is gonna be one and it's literally gonna do the exact same thing. So a for loop within a for loop is, it's going to iterate over the array and then it's gonna go back, it's gonna iterate over the array, it's gonna go back, it's gonna iterate over the array. And that's one of the reasons why they have you learn this algorithm. So it'll just keep going back, it's gonna iterate, it's gonna keep iterating. And as you can see, this thing's probably gonna go through literally like hundreds and hundreds of these. So let me see. And as each pass goes, it's going to go ahead and please don't go back through again because I do not want, okay. And once it figures out that there's not any more to sort, it's going to go, go ahead. It's just going to keep running through it. And voila, it went ahead, it executed, or uh, it ran through it and it sorted the array. Let me see here. Let's, should be able to return it. Um, go back in here. So it's going to return that array. Actually, um, I mean, you guys saw you guys saw it go through the, the debugger. Like, I don't need to go back through there again because I'm going to I'm going to have to go th back through and iterate it. And I'm on the stream. Let's see. Let's go back down. I'm trying to think of a way that I could go in here. So let's just say um, we'll go back in, and I, I'm just going to so value. We'll we'll call this value. And we'll say it's equal to bubble sort. So bubble sort. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna toss in this array. And I'm kind of doing this just kind of like off the top of my head. So I wasn't thinking that, it, I forgot to. Okay, so we've got that. Send that, that's gonna store it as the value. And now we'll actually be able to see the value. I think that that's a good way. So we'll go here value is equal to zero and we'll put a little joker value in here so that we don't have to actually see um, so that we can see it in the debugger let me see so value and we'll go joker value <laughs> and we got to make this an end because it is an integer and we'll go ahead and declare that as zero Okay, so go down here, boom, and thank you God, it went through and it sorted every single one of them, so there's proof that this algorithm is in fact working, but it did take a lot of iterations. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.